All right, boys and girls, so the last time we were together, we were studying Gothic architecture. And so today, we are going to continue on because we found out that last time, Abbot Suger was so distressed at the fact that his cathedral didn't have any light in it. It was so stinking dark. So he urged the architects in the town to come up with a different way of making windows, and they used the pointed arch which allowed them to make beautiful cathedrals that had lots and lots of lights coming in. That was wonderful. And we call that Gothic architecture, and this is a Gothic cathedral. And we found out that the last time we were together that the centerpiece of a Gothic cathedral is a rose window that has stained glass that not only allows light to come in, but also tells people the story of the Bible, and that that window is supported through tracery. So, boys and girls, today what we're going to start doing is looking at the cathedral itself. And we're going to be looking at the very front of it, or if you want to sound fancy, you'd call it the facade. Now, before we begin, I really want for you to remember that the pointed arch made all the difference. And I want you to see that the pointed arch is right there by the doorway. The pointed arch is up here in what's called the arcade. We see it there. And the pointed arch is even up in the bell towers. So we see that pointed arch all over the place. So today when we draw our own Gothic cathedrals, you have to make sure to be drawing pointed arches. So let's look at this thing a little bit closer. The first thing that you need to understand about a Gothic cathedral is that it's based on the idea that God is three people in one. God is Father, He is the Son, and He is the Holy Spirit. And all of those three parts of God exist as one God. So they wanted that to be represented in their cathedrals. So if you look here, we have one section here, a section here, and a section here. It's like it's been divided in three parts. And it represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now what's cool is you can divide up the cathedral going the other way too. You can have it be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the cathedrals can be divided in three, up and down or sideways to represent the Trinity. And when we look at other cathedrals, you'll be able to see that you can see Father, Son, Holy Spirit going this way, Father, Son, Holy Spirit going this way. Here's another one, bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. And I actually made this grid work over here so that you can kind of see how it goes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then up and down, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And you're going to get better and better at looking at these Gothic cathedrals and being able to spot the three side to side and the three up and down to represent the Trinity. Now, Let's start looking at each one of these levels, starting at the bottom, because it's almost as if when you look at a cathedral that you can read it just like a book. And it's telling the story of how we need God. And let me explain to you how that is. Level one just happens to have the doors. And the doors lead into the cathedral where people will talk about the sins that they've committed, maybe ask for forgiveness, and worship God. So let's look at this. The three doors that lead into the cathedral, the level one, is what we call a portal. And when we look up close to the portals, you'll see that it's not just a whole bunch of, you know, lines going like this. It's actually a whole bunch of tiny little statues of angels and of all kinds of people that are looking at the people that exist here on earth. And what's happening is that they are showing everyone eventually going before God and God saying, did you ask Jesus into your heart? And the people that say yes and that he knows that they have asked Jesus into their heart, they get to go to heaven. And so these portals tell that story in this one, and this one, and this one, as a reminder that when you're walking through the doors of the, of the cathedral, to say to yourself, have I asked Jesus into my heart? 
Remember, section one is called the portals. Now, level one is all about you and me. It's about you and me saying, do we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? And have we accepted him into our heart? This is a serious question, so they put that already on level one. Now, another thing I want you to realize on level one, just decoration-wise, is that it has these columns coming this way, that very beautiful design. So later on, when you decide to how you want to draw your cathedral, you may want to include something like that. Now let's move on to level two. If level one was about you and me, level two is about our salvation. Now let's look a little closer at this. It's almost like, again, we're reading the story. This section right here in level two is called the Gallery of the Kings. And they're not talking about kings, King Henry, King Charles, King William, something like that. They're talking about all of the people that ended up giving birth to Jesus. Now, if you're like, what? If we start over here, some of you will remember David. He played the harp and he was a shepherd and he wrote lots of different psalms. Well, David gave birth to a man named Solomon. Solomon and his wife gave birth to another child. Him and his wife gave birth to another child. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. By the end, they end up giving birth to Jesus. So this is kind of like a family tree right here in the in the gallery of the kings. And if you look at them up close, you'll see that it's actual statues of all these people in the Bible where it's the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus to the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus to the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus to the great, 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 you get the idea. And it goes on and on and on and on and on all the way until we get to Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. Now the rose window we already talked about last week, but I do want you to notice that the fact that it's a circle is not just a coincidence. The circle is supposed to show kind of like a cycle. And it's supposed to show that the cycle is one that's eternal, that God is the beginning, the middle, and the end. And that just keeps going round and round and round. He always was here and always will be. So cool. Now, on the second level, there's also just decorative things. One of them is called the arcade. Now, the arcade is just a fancy way of saying that there are a whole bunch of arches and columns in a row. These are super fun to put on your cathedral because they just look absolutely fantastic. You can steal some ideas from these, uh, the arcades shown here, and they will make your cathedral look so cool. And in addition, you also have our good old windows. And remember that our windows are going to be pointed arches, and I have an example sheet that's going to be on your tables with a gazillion different types of windows that you can put on either side of your rose window. Moving right along, we go to level three, which is supposed to represent heaven. Remember, it started with you and me here. Then it ended up with Jesus coming to give us eternal life. And finally, the top points towards heaven. And if you look at the things that are on the top of these cathedrals, not only do they look like arrows pointing up towards heaven, but they're very decorative, and a lot of times they'll have bells in time in, inside of there. And so the level three is just that you can have any kind of design that you want, but it's supposed to be pointing heavenward. So if we look again at the cathedral we learned about last week, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, we have the first level, second level, third level. We have the portals, which are the doorways, Gallery of the Kings, Rose Window, windows, the arcade, and the towers. And when we start to look at all of these different cathedrals, I'm wondering if you can remember what part is this. It's level one, but what do we call those doorways? They're called portals. Let's look at this one. What do you call all those statues in a row of kings? The gallery of the kings. Now, what is it that you call a whole bunch of columns together and arches? Oh, yeah, my, my, wow, what is it called? 
It's called the arcade. And if we look here, when we see a whole bunch of openings like this to let light into the cathedral, they are called, come on, you have them in your house, windows. And last but not least, on the very top, we have towers and spires. So today you are going to be drawing that. I'll show you how in just a moment.